All right, thanks for tuning in for this stream. I'm going to go through creating a static autoloader for Drupal. Um, right now, this code actually exists inside PHP stand Drupal itself. And what it allows doing, or rather, I guess to back up a bit, let's actually look at Drupal code itself. Um, luckily, I have this in a fixture. So with Drupal, inside the Drupal kernel, which I will get open. Normally with the PHP project, all of its classes are dumped to the autoloader and it can just be found automatically. But with Drupal, it's very dynamic based on the modules that are available. So when it comes to doing static code analysis, a lot of the times the code cannot be found um, because PHP doesn't know how to load it up. So actually inside the Drupal kernel, we have a nice leg in a little bit, autoloader. An autoload, if we look for class loader, you'll see here that it finds all the module namespaces during the update modules method and then adds them to the class loader dynamically. So it finds all the module namespaces and then adds them. And this is done on boot of Drupal every run. So that means that it's not dumped. Like you cannot dump Drupal's auto loader. So that way you just know how to access a file. Um, the PSR4 namespacing is dynamically generated based on Drupal backslash module name. And that means tools like PHP stand don't work too well um, because they don't know how to load the code and how to work with that said code. So I spent some time while working on the PHP stand Drupal to create this autoloader. There's actually an, an autoloader file in here that the extension marks as a bootstrap file for PHP stand. So what this does is it ensures this constant is defined for testing and then it creates a new Drupal autoloader, which is past the PHP stand container. And the main reason we take the PHP stand container is to get the root to the Drupal directory. And from then on out, we just leverage Drupal finder that finds the Drupal root, such as Drupal root and vendor. So if we had a web directory, that would be web core, or if you had doc root, that'd be doc root core, or if you had a non-composer template build, that would just be core. Delete those. And then we go through and it actually loads the auto loader for Drupal itself and then registers. It finds all the extensions and it goes through and adds all the namespaces just as Drupal would. So that way when PHP stand goes and reads this, it knows how to find class files. So what I want to do, is actually spin all of this out into its own, into its own mod, into its own package. So that way it can be shared by the Psalm plugin, which Psalm PHP, actually, there we go. So Sam Martinson or Samuel has created the, a plugin called Psalm plugin Drupal. And he took an interesting approach where he wrapped the kernel into a class that can dump it as an XML file to be processed. Um, and as far as I know, this might set up the auto loading. Oh, it dumps the auto loader here. Um, it compiles the container. And this is kind of like a quick and dirty way of doing it. Um, and it doesn't account for every module available. It only, you have to then configure and say what modules to be scanned, which has its benefits as well. But if I can spit out all of this, this code into its own package, then the Psalm plugin can use it. PHP stand Drupal can use it. And then Drupal Rector can even use it um, to just make auto loading easier. And who knows, maybe it could lead to improvements inside of Drupal core for dumping the auto loader as well. Um, because that would improve performance quite a bit if it didn't have to on the fly always register namespaces and it could actually dump them.
So we're going to go through and I'm going to create a new repository. Uh, I'm going to call this Drupal Static Autoloader um, supports a, a package to support static autoloading of Drupal code. We'll just say code, Drupal core and extension code. We'll say that. Um, because even not all of core is dumped into the autoloader. If we go back into Drupal core um, and we go to the composer.json for core, sorry, it takes me a second to find it. And then we look at PSR four, we'll see that it only namespaces the Drupal core, the Drupal component, and then any drivers. And then it manually does a class map of different database things and includes the bootstrap.inc. So there's a lot of code that's not included, such as common.inc. All these aren't auto loaded. So PHP Send actually has no idea how to get those unless in our auto loader, in this load legacy includes, we load them ourselves. So we're going to go through create this. We're going to add a readme. Let's do a git ignore. We'll add a composer. Git ignore. And we'll choose a license. Let's pick MIT. And let's create the repository. All right, now we're going to clone it. So I'll actually just use the GitHub CLI since I have it. I'm going to put this into my um, Drupal working directory. So I'm going to go into, I actually have a folder called Drupal where I do all of my Drupal y things to keep it separated from, you know, all my other projects that I do since a lot, like about 70% of my experiments are with Drupal. So I'm going to paste that command GitHub repo clone mglomin Drupal static autoloader. Enter. That was pretty quick because there's nothing in that repo yet. So let's go to static. Great. So we're here. So the next step is let's do a composer init. I'll put it under, yep, mglom and Drupal static autoloader. I'm going to copy the description I gave here. And the author, minimum stability, let's say stable. Um, package type is a library. License, we picked MIT. If you want to define your requirements interactively, I don't think I actually need, oh, there is one requirement. Um, we will need Webflow Drupal Finder. So let's, oh, sorry. Yes, and then paste the find. We want that. Dev dependencies, we do want, um, but I'm not going to do those interactively actually. So we'll hit yes and install the dependencies. Great. What I want to do next is start actually adding some of the dev dependencies. So what I've done for PHP stand Drupal is we, is it actually installs Drupal core into a test fixtures directory. And that allows us to test it um, as an integration, which is exactly what we want to be able to do. Um, so I want, I'm going to open this in PHP storm via the PHP storm command line. So I do PHP storm dot and the dot means this current directory here. And I, since we have a library, I do not want to commit my lock file. Add this. So next up, we want, um, I thought composer installers would be part of it, but I'm just gonna copy my required dev here and paste it after. Um, so that way we're gonna get core recommended. Oh, core composer installers is a dev dependency, okay. So we're gonna get core recommended, core dev, drush. Um, we'll need this hack eventually. Let's do that, da, da. installer paths. Okay, this is what we want, is we wanna say install to test fixtures for everything that is a composer installer. So 
So we'll paste that, which means that I need to make a directory called test fixtures. I'm gonna put, whoop, that's a minimize. I'm gonna do command N and create a new file called git keep. Or actually, no, not git keep. Let me delete that. The proper way would be a git ignore file. And this is going to ignore the Drupal directory. I believe that's how I even have this set up in PHP stand Drupal. Let's see. No, how did I ignore it there? Oh, because I have some things committed because I have examples. Um, so maybe I will have to copy that a bit more. Oops. Sorry, I bumped my table a lot more than I expected to. Um, so let's first just run composer update. And it's running down here. And I'm going to update the PHP versions that are allowed based off PHP stand Drupal and I have PHP unit in there. Great. So one reason that PHP unit says this wide array of options is because when working with Drupal 8.8 .8 through 9, um, Drupal 8 supported 6 and 7, Drupal 9 supports 8 and 9 of PHP unit. So that is a wonderful wide array of things to have to support. All right, so we'll see here, we've received Drupal core in our fixtures. Now, Drupal finder won't discover this as a legitimate path, but I guess we'll use some test-driven development to you know, find that out. So what I'll do is auto load dev class map test sorts. I'll add that right here. And let's create our resize that so it's better for you all. Let's do a new directory. We'll call it source. And Do I have it? I don't even have a regular test case. All right, so we'll start with a new file called autoloadtest.php. And Glamen, what do I have the namespace in here even? I don't think I've ever actually namespaced something with my username. Um, I'm curious how Samuel's done it. Ms. Mortensen. All right, well, I'm gonna do that and we'll call it the Drupal static autoloader test. Will be the namespace we give it. Final class, autoload test extends test case or indexing so it won't load. And we'll go ahead and create our source directory. So we'll wait for this to finish indexing. Or it's just taking a good while. So let's do, let's just start here. We're gonna create a, no, we're gonna call it autoloader.php. Let's do that. Namespace and Glomin. Drupal static. Auto loader. I'm gonna do final. Clap. Actually, I don't want to make this final because I want people to be able to override it. Um, class auto loader. And now I'm gonna start borrowing from over here. And I'm using this actually as I'm not gonna copy paste because I want to use this as a chance to rewrite some of this if needed and maybe make it better and do like true test driven development with it. Um, because this evolved over time. So we'll do class autoloader. 
and it just has a register. Um, I'm kind of curious how Composer dumps theirs. So let's look at, so they just do git loader. Oh man, this indexing. Oh shoot, I know why. I should, um, did I mark that as excluded here? No, I didn't. All right, it's gonna take a bit. bouncing around so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call this method um, get loader just so that loads the class get cl load class get loader and that so there's that um, all right so we'll call it public or rather here we're gonna do construct and the path must be a, um, we want a string of the Drupal root or a root directory. And what we're going to do is find that directory. And let's copy here. We can copy a bunch of this stuff. We'll say, invalid argument exception and that we cannot detect Drupal at that root directory and we'll do Drupal root equals Drupal root and this vendor root equal uh, we'll say Drupal vendor root equals Drupal vendor root Let's add the property. We'll make it protected since I want, usually I do things as private so that way they can't be overridden. But since this is so experimental, I kind of want to just let people be able to override it. Um, actually, I'm changing my mind on that. Right now, I want to know why people need to make changes. So there's an often a discussion in open source on whether you should make something private or protected. Um, due to the fact that if it's private no if it's a final class no one can extend it and if it's private it cannot be um accessed outside of you know inheritance and one reason that i am for using final and private is it forces discussion people can't just extend your code and then do stuff with it and then you worry about breaking their implementation so i like locking things down because it makes it to be um it enforces discussion about changes. So now we'll make a public function called register. And right now, this is gonna be a, a no operation. It's just gonna void out. So let's get back to our test. So we have the auto loader. Test case. Um, I need to define the auto load here. So let's do auto load PSR four. And again, if you use VS code or PHP storm, um, these should auto complete since it's part of the JSON schema definition for the composer.json. So we'll do, um, I can never remember how to define this. So we're going to say mglamen Drupal. Oh, great. It auto completed it for me, which is pretty awesome. And the directory is available. And this actually turned a blue because it is defined um, as the auto loader, auto loader source. So I'm actually going to do the same. I'm going to change the auto load dev to be um, a PSR four, and we'll call it, let's see. Oh, it doesn't want to auto, oh, there we go. So it did the autocomplete and it should now show my source directory as green. So PHP Storm now recognizes this as my test source and then as my regular source. 
Um, I believe if we right click and mark directory as, you can see it says test sources root or sources root, resource root, no idea. Excluded prevents it from being indexed, which can be performant if you have some files that just make your indexing take forever. Um, all right, so we've got that. And we don't have a PHP unit configuration. So let's go ahead and generate that. PHP vendor bin, PHP unit, um, generate configuration. Let's close that. Yep, that's the auto loader, test directory, test source. That's the source directory. There we go. And we want to add PHP unit .cache to our git ignore and add the file. So I use command option A to be able to automatically add that to version control. So, all right, so to recap, there's a few things happened. Um, I set up my namespacing. So that way mglomin Drupal static auto loader source, then I have mglomin Drupal static loader test to my test directory. My main dependencies are the Drupal Webflow or Webflow Drupal Finder, and this lets you take a path and then find where the Drupal doc root is and where um, the vendor directory is. And then all the wonderful dev tools, um, PHP stand and PHP unit and code sniffer, along with code that lets me install Drush or sorry, Drupal as a test dependency. And this tells it where to install Drupal inside of test fixtures. We have Drupal and core. So now we want to test the basics of our auto loader. So let's go to test source auto load. Um, so let's do, I believe if I do command N test method, oh, there should be a way I say this covers default class auto loader and I do control N I guess there is no usually I thought there was a way to be able to say like oh I want to test register um, but we want to say test constructor um, so this actually is going to cover the constructor I'm not sure if that's even like a yeah construct does in our constructor, we validate the path that's passed in. So we're going to, um, let's go and test this. So we're gonna do a negative test first. So um, let's see, test constructor, we'll do invalid, hmm. Usually I use a data provider to pass different paths to do like a negative and positive test, but that's kind of overkill here. So we're going to say test constructor invalid argument. And we'll say path equals the current directory um, or even we should do a test here. Like, if if is readable so in, um unable to read unable to read root so is readable allows us to know if it's a file or directory and we can actually read it so it's a good way to check because somebody could pass us a file name or a directory to be able to find out where Drupal is located. So we want to do is readable. And in this case, I am going to create a test provider. So we'll do string path. Um, and another string of expected error. Or we'll do um, string or let's 
I'll say expected error and array expected results. So we're going to do a data provider for this data provider. Um, we'll call it paths data. And we'll yield out generator new generator. So we're going to yield out the path of a fake path, a foo bar baz. And we expect the error to be unable to ex read who bar baz and there's no results. So if I click play, I need to configure PHP unit. Oh, um, that part of it. And I'm going to do command comma to load my settings. Let's go to PHP test frameworks. This is one thing too, if you are a user of PHP Storm and haven't opened settings in a while, before PHP used to be under language and frameworks, but they've since moved it up, um, which is pretty nice. So let's add PHP unit local. Let's go to Drupal and static autoloader, path to autoload.php. We have that there in a deep provide a default configuration file. We'll go up a directory to PHP unit XML test root tests. All right, actually this should be all right. So that's working or should be working. So we'll do a auto loader equals new auto load. And we'll pass it to path. But one thing we want to do, like if expected error does not equal to an empty string, this expect exception invalid argument exception class, and this expect exception message to be the expected error. Um, and this will throw an exception. Other ways we can say this assert. Hmm. Actually, we don't allow getting the paths from that. So we are just going to first start with making sure that we catch errors properly. So we're going to hit play. Failure. Error class not found. Um, oh, I need to dump the auto loader composer. Dump auto load. There we go. Because I, last time I generated the auto loader, I didn't have all these definitions in place. So there we go. Um, I forgot the Unable to detect Drupal at foobar baz. Unable to read. Oh shoot, that's if is readable. So that's why I like doing test driven development is I had bad logic um, and that would have passed on and I didn't realize it. So we've got that there. So now let's give it a valid root of, um, we'll give it the We're going to give it our, our um, source directory. And that should say unable to detect Drupal at I'm just going to copy that. And if we run the test again, Invalid argument exceptions thrown. Oh, interesting. Um, did it discover it? So it did. 
it was able to discover it in because of the auto loader. That's actually really interesting. I didn't know it worked that way. So we want to do a different test of there. We'll just send it up a few more directories or actually a more PHP get temporary. I can never remember this function name to get the temporary directory. Sys get temp dir. So we're going to try it this way to see if that's a little bit more predictable. Okay, so that did fail. So now we want to do the happy path, which is that we have Drupal in our fixtures directory. So let's do directory. We're going to go back up into fixtures and we're going to pass it to, um, we'll actually pass it to Drupal and we'll verify that there's no error. We're not passing a third parameter anymore. And a lot of times somebody would be using this is they're going to be testing a nested file. So let's find a nested file in there. All right, so we'll play. Test and not perform any assertions. Um, this expect no. So if there's no error, we're gonna expect not to perform any assertions. Okay, so we know that we're able to find the file, or we're able to find Drupal and be able to get started on it. Not super eventful, but it does ensure that we have a good baseline available. Um, next part is we need to actually start registering it. So what I want to do is we are going to say um, public function test test um, test register and in this case we're going to do string um, we'll just say class name we'll just do test class exists and we'll do the class name to assert test that a class name exists and this covers the register method and we're going to do a data provider of class names and now we will do um, so we'll do we'll start with this should always exist so we'll do this assert true class exists class name I wonder if we'll have to do ones like traits um, and interfaces so I guess we uh, do, we could say like type, but we'll just start here. Um, and what we want to do is grab our auto loader. And say register. When you wrap a class in parentheses, you can actually call something there. So I feel like we need to just provide a static method for that. Um, in the path, we are going to hard code it to our source directory. And 
And so this should just work because Drupal is dumped as a class. Um, so we'll move on to something more um, such as, we know what component is. So we know that, I'm gonna say baseline dumped to auto loader. We know that everything inside auto load. We know that everything inside lib component Drupal is auto loaded and inside Drupal driver, wherever that is. Why don't I see it? Oh, because it's in drivers. Oh, because you install drivers alongside core. That's why. Um, so we know that all of these are bootstrapped in it. So let's pick something that's not. So let's go to Drupal. Let's go to core. And the private key is not. So let's just start there. We're going to say um, private key class. And this is gonna get really obnoxious if we auto import everything. So I'm going to do that. Now let's do play. And this should fail. Oh, needs to be another yield. Um, which maybe doing a yield is the wrong way to do it. It's the same difference, honestly. So let's just clean it up a little bit. We'll do yield. All right, so this should be our first failure. And when I hit play, oh, okay. It did exist. Um, Let's try, let's try something else. I'm doing shift option command C, which is the same as copy reference. And I'm gonna paste this here. All right, well, that's unexpected. I thought that those weren't auto loaded Drupal core. So I'm just curious now to search in my vendor directory for private key. Um, not in there. Let's look in the composer directory. So it's able to find it. Let's try something else. Um, core modules, let's go to action and we'll pick action list builder. And if this is passing, then something feels very, very wrong. So yield. Okay, there we go. Um, well, that's, that's new. I've never, I don't remember it actually supporting the auto load here very well. Um, but we did get this where now we cannot find the module class and that's a good start. So let's start working on that part of it. So an auto loader and register. Let's look at our PHP stand Drupal code. So we set the, we have to, we end up loading the auto loader. So let's do that. We need the auto loader to be available. So we'll say private auto loader. And we can copy this line here. So we take the auto loader because we add to it. Um, as you saw in Drupal kernel, this they call it class loader. Maybe we should rename it that way. 
Um, so this is C add multiple PSR four. This adds all the namespaces for us. And this is this whole section here and discover service providers and all that is what we have to um, replicate basically. So we've got the auto loader. Which I don't think you can type in that, can you? Let's see in here. Oh, yep, you can. All right, so first we're going to work on auto loading our extensions. Um, how did we do this here? Extension discovery, new extension discovery. So I had to copy this out of Drupal core because we'd have to make Drupal core a dependency. Let's see if anything has changed. So extension discovery is inside Drupal core extension. So we do need to copy it out. Um, we will take, we're going to just do a copy and we'll say, um, Trying to think of like, I want to put this in a directory. We'll just call it Drupal So namespace is ramen. So in this namespace, we had to modify it here. but I'm not sure how it was, how we modified it. Um, the constructor, oh, we removed, that's right. So we removed this part of it. So we removed the file cache. And profile, oh, interesting. I didn't realize this, like profile directories, we hard coded to just standard. Um, oh, interesting. And for the site path, we set to just default. So let's go in here. Like I said, I'm trying to make sure that I don't copy paste things. I wanna to try to do it better this time around. Um, so we're going to just start here with this extension discovery. Let's import this from here. Looks like Drush made their own version of it as well. No, not PHP stand. Oh, I wait. Namespace. Why is it there? All right. So I'm actually curious about the one inside Drush. Um, but we'll we'll tackle that another day. Um, so extension directory. I guess you can pass a null profiles directory. What happens if profile directories is null? Um, well, I guess we should remove the file cache usages as well. So that if this file cache, we're not setting it. Um, so we'll do that. And then this set profile directories, it clears it out. Um, so we scan for our profiles. The module data, we have to add that in. Okay, I do know we need to run this because we have to reset all the profiles. So we'll say discover all available profiles. And then we'll say, okay, we do need all of this. 
discover module data and discover theme data. I think they should be moved into their own methods. Um, extension. I had to copy out the extension from core. So Drupal extension discovery. Where is the file? Extension. And we'll paste that into the Drupal directory and I'm going to add it and rename the into Drupal. And I think this should be okay here. Um, wake up, ah, well. Let's see, so we'll use Drupal static autoloader, Drupal extension so that should fix those warnings so set all profile directory scan module let's see here this module data is used in various ways um, this add module namespaces so what I think we'll do is we're going to create a method called um, So we'll keep scanning of the profiles in place. And let's create a new method called this register module extensions. And then we will copy this into here and call it modules. And we'll say this register theme extensions. So this scan, so this extension discovery, oh, I gotta make it a property. So that way it's known. And we scan include tests. So this here says profiles, that looks wrong. Um, array merge modules or profiles. So wait, why was I merging in? I was merging in the profiles with the module data to register in their namespaces, I guess. Um, well, I don't necessarily like that, so I'm gonna remove that, which means that we don't need, and this is a, uh, this is a gotcha with some themes or some tests, because the, the module was loaded alphabetically and his test code was registering things that broke um, items. So I actually want to get rid of that for now. I want to remove all the hacks that have kind of grown over the over time. And like I said, start anew. So we have add module namespaces. And this we copy a lot from Drupal kernel. So let's actually go back to the Drupal kernel. Um, extensions, get module namespaces. So that's what's going on here. So we recreate the module directory and the module name and go through there. I'm curious why we don't go the same way. So let's go and Let's get to module file. Sorry, I, so module file names. 
module file names, this get module file names, modules list. Ah, that's how it does it. Um, this data get module data, which returns an array of extensions. So we will do a, we'll say module file names equals array map static function extension and we return extension get file name from modules so that gives the same file name and what we should do what I should do is I'm going to do a copy reference and start annotating where things are. Oh, I closed the actual autoloader, not the file. So we'll say C there. So this will give us all the file names and it's going to give us all the namespaces available. And if I look back at the kernel, so get file names. So I guess the file names, this class loader add get module namespaces, which we have here. So let's copy the reference here. And I have an idea of a way that I could actually work around this to maybe reduce creating duplicate code. Um, because right now I am having to copy a lot of this stuff from inside the kernel. So let's call this. Um, we will call, we'll do a new file called Drupal kernel shim. Now, for those who don't know, define shim. Shim is, you know, something that's used to like the placeholder, like make it work. Um, in this case, the shim is a library that transparently intercepts API calls and changes the arguments passed. What I'm going to have it do is extend the Drupal kernel and take some of those protected methods and call, make them public so I can share them. So, which you can totally do. So I'm glomming Drupal static autoloader Drupal. It feels redundant calling it Drupal in there, but I don't know where else to put these things. So we're going to say final class extends Drupal kernel. And I actually learned this trick from Gabe um, with our work on the git.drupal.org with JSON API resources. We use this here to expose some hidden things in JSON API for ourselves. Um, so if I go to unstable here, controller oh maybe we don't I thought we did I thought we had it in here but I think it's in maybe it's in commerce API so I'm going to show an example of where we've done this previously so we call it entity resource shim right here and so deserialize is protected. So is check patch access field. And all this does is purely make it public for, for being able to access it outside of the class. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, when I say get module file names, so I'm going to do get module file names. And I'm going to make this be public. However, I realize this may not be a great idea um because what is in the constructor um so construct environment class loader allow dumping I guess application root we'll try this out um First, I want to get it working the old way, and then we'll try this out. Yeah. 
Um, do that. And we also want to get First, I want to get it working the way that I have in PHP stand Drupal, and then we'll make sure that it actually works. Um, so add module, this namespaces. So it's registering the namespaces. I have it in like various steps that register the namespaces. Um, so why don't we actually just do for each namespaces as paths. So I think we could just do this. Where this is the prefix and that's the path. So I can do, do this sort of hack for test. You can also do it with inline classes, like an anonymous class where you do like, um, I, I can't remember how you define it, but that would be interesting if, I don't know how it would necessarily help out right here, right now. Um, but I wanna keep that in mind because that could be very useful for this. All right, that's good to know. Um, so let's see here. I'm gonna rerun my test because that should um, assert true. Can I add a message? I'm gonna say let's just make sure. Let's rerun that again. Fail to asserting that false is true. Let's go do some xdebug with that data provider. So this auto loader, we've got our auto loader here. Hit play, our modules list. We have 84 modules. We've got the action module right here. Oh, path name with root. That's okay, I see. That's where this is broken. Um, Let's go back to the, the auto loader here. So that's why I had to append all of this because the, um, the directory name. So we actually have to do shoot. I hit stop too soon. So let's do a register. So we have file name. We actually want it to be extension get ah. extension. Can we not get the root file name type get path? Let's see about the path. Get path, no. Oh, um, let's do get path. We'll restart the debugger. So file name is modules action. So that works. But again, we just don't have the, but I wonder why core doesn't do that. Why it doesn't just pick the path. So we'll do, um, Gonna rename this. We're gonna call this from file names. We're gonna do shift f function f6. We're gonna do module paths. Um, this point is probably not even worth doing the array mapping here. Um, this does make me want to go back to the Drupal kernel real quick. Get module file names. So it takes the file names and gets the namespaces from the file names, which 
in our case won't work because we need to prepend the um, full path. So that won't work. But what we could just do is skip the fancy array mapping and how core does it. So we can do for each modules, for each modules as module path equals this Drupal root module git path and the so we would do this autoloader add psr4 prefix is as we'll say module name we're going to say Yep, we'll just do that. It's a module name. Wrap it in brackets. So I think we can reduce it to just that amount of code. Um, and let's find out by running the debugger. So path, Drupal core, nope. I forgot a wonderful slash all right so the path is this if i copy this value and I do ls we have there but we need to add source at the end of it which is what the drupal kernel is doing so let's do let's stop let's reload the debugger so path all right Let's copy the value. Let's do ls. All right, we got files there. Um, let's step into this. So the prefix, Drupal action, paths. This prefix, da, 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 da. All right, so let's hit play and skip over this. And look at that, we got a green test. So if I hit run, we now have all green. Woohoo. Um, thanks for the link. I'm gonna, why won't it let me copy? Let's copy that and check. Oh, okay, there we go. Yeah. I've never had a chance to really work with this. But that's really interesting because that provides a, you instead of providing a, um, like a concrete class here as a shim, we could extend it anonymously to just get the value we need. Um, that would be a really interesting workaround if there's like one method we need. But unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't think we need that. Because um, we just simplified the auto-loading of the extension. And what I think we're going to do is we're going to refactor this more, right? So we get, it's one part of like test-driven development is like refactor tests. So before I move on too, too ahead of myself, let's look at a theme. Let's try to register a class from a theme. Let's look at Olivero. We got Olivero pre-render. So let's do copy reference and let's add that to our test. So we've got yield class. Now this should fail because we don't have theme auto loading support yet. Now, if we went in here and I straight up just copied this and we said themes, Shoot, I don't even need to change that. I bet if I hit play, it works. So what we have here is a chance to refactor and simplify. So we can have just private function register extension namespaces. And we can have a string called type. And if type is not equal to module and type is not equal to theme 
we're going to throw a new invalid argument exception um, must be module or theme but got type so I like to be one thing I like to do recently is be really explicit in the values allowed since we don't have enums um, and what's really cool with this PHP extension I have is if I change this to register extensions type name, um, the usage reader, the deep association plugin actually notices like those are the valid types. Like it's able to infer that super cool. And we'll, we'll change that there. And we're going to do theme. So we're gonna register all the namespaces from our theme and extensions. Um, so that's really cool. And now if I run this again, oh. Oh, wait, shoot. Yeah, of course that's going to fail because I <laughs> didn't put any code in here. So now we can change this to be called extensions. We can change this to be type and refactor rename to be extension name and refactor this to be um, extension. So now if I delete this, we have a green test. So through test driven development, kind of just hacking as I went, we were able to get um, auto loading of extension namespaces in, and it looks like a lot of cores automatically working. So this is why I'm a big fan of using test driven development. Not only did I streamline part of the existing code in PHP stand Drupal, um, we have better test coverage. Now I know there's gonna be some gotchas along the way, such as with modules, we register their test directory. Um, so we could do that next. This finds like the services file on top of a few other things. It auto loads the service provider. Um, so we could do that as well. So why does this have to be explicitly registered? I can't remember. But that's where I, like I said, a lot of that code is there because I was just like working on it so much that I don't want to just copy paste things. Um, profiles. So we have it working with modules and themes. The types of pro, the types of extensions available are. Um, does this actually say what are the valid ones? I don't believe that the extension cares about it, but extension discovery may do that. Um, so profile directories, filter by directories, profiles, all files. Does this really not type? It doesn't validate the type? Huh. So we can do profile or theme engine. So I guess that's one thing we need to do here. So we need to, to do register and uh, theme engine. All right, so those are the, those are the supported extensions. So let's figure out profiles. One of these has got to have a class with it, I would hope, um, because I know hmm, because I know that profiles can have their own 
sources because if we go to get and we look at lightning you'll see that they have a source directory. So we need to test that. So what we'll do is we know that Drupal has a profiles. We can do a profiles directory and we can say auto loader, auto load fixture. And we can create our own mini profile, if you will. So name auto load fixture profile. So I'm going to refactor this and then read that chat message. So we're going to call it auto load fixture profile and rename this. Oh, I'm going to remove the info.yaml. Type is profile. So there isn't validation because of profiles. Profiles sneak through as modules, but then there are exceptions. Yeah, profiles are weird. They're their own extension, but they're treated as a module. So that makes sense. Um, geez, so let's copy, we'll just, da, 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 da. We don't need all of that, but what we can do now is I should be able to do source. Um, let me look here again. So yeah, so this should just work. Oh, they even have their own component direct. I feel like we need to try to get some of Drupal's extension discovery and plugin discovery. Well, some of Drupal's plugin discovery is in the components as a subtree split, but so much of it is overridden inside Drupal core that it's not really a full split that can be used. So we'll say, call this a um, class in profile.php. So the namespace should be Drupal, should just be that. And then we'll say final class class and profile it can be as simple as that. We're going to copy the reference and do this register namespaces. We're going to do say profile, which is interesting that profile showed up as an option, even though it's not used in here. Um, So let's rerun the test. I didn't add that to the test. Now, this is not the best test case. Um, the real test case will be once this is integrated with the PHP stand Drupal, but it is covering a lot of the groundwork. Um, you know, really we could add Drupal Lightning as a dependency, so that way we could try to scan that. Um, but that's also a really big profile. Um, so we'll, we'll stick with this for now. And we got the class and profile to load. So that takes care of that. Now theme engine. I actually don't know how you register theme engines. So themes. No, no. Um, here's how you find out. You search for theme engine. And where is this located? Oh, it is in themes here. Oh, so that's gonna be fun. I, I actually don't know if PHP Sand Drupal supports scanning these files. Um, so we're gonna make a somewhere we make it to do to do support auto loading theme engine extension dot engine files I think that's what we need to do um, and as we'll see 
that we actually have a few more things to do for auto loading. So let's go back to our tests. So we're, we're testing the class names and that works out great. Now we should do, um, so that should handle traits. Let's do public function test, test class exists. Um, we'll try test classes next because that's the next nightmare scenario um, for auto loading. And I say nightmare scenario because it just is. Um, let's create a helper method for loading the auto loader. So do a public static function get loader. Let's say string root. You say self. There we go. So we'll do a return new self root auto loader get loader. Copy that, auto loader, get loader, there. So that's a little bit easier. I wonder if, we can improve this even more, this testing. Because I really hate the idea of having to like copy this. So let's do um, string exists function and say so we are going to try to replicate this to do a handful of other like exist functions so do uh, my class exists, trade exists, interface exists. What is it? Is like func is it function? It's not. Oh, it is function exists. Great, isn't it? it is whatever. Um, I thought it was something else. So we'll start there. So. You can pass multiple data providers to one method. So let's just call this test. Test exists. And we're going to. I'm going to use um, option click to create multiple cursors here. And class names. So we got class names here. Now we're gonna do another data provider. Let's do data provider. I don't wanna to go to test quite yet. Let's say function names. So let's do the data provider and we'll do yield function exists. Um, I wonder if, it, can get if you can know what the data provider being passed in is. I'm going to do an X debug there in a second. So let's do function exists. Um, fixtures core. So we looked at the composer auto loader and we see here that the includes is loaded so if i go down let's just verify drupal get file name exists this should pass run call the undefined function oh what 
shoot. We got the arrow. So it did not load the Drupal get file name. Well, that's interesting because is, um, because that should be auto loaded if it's in the includes. I'm just really curious let's just check out the so when you have a file that won't be auto loaded you can go into your vendor directory go into composer and then inside files here you'll see all the files that are available and in here we have test fixtures core inside base directory Smells a bit like trying to inspect how the test is called in a test. It this it yeah, all this starts to get really weird. Um I'm gonna debug this real quick. I wanna check out these args. Oh bummer. I was really hoping you would know what the data provider is. Um provided tests. Data. Result, no. Groups, no. All right. Um, so what we can do now is in our auto loader, copy over the. Ah, uh, where did we have it here? Load legacy includes. So that's where we have Finder that finds all the files inside the includes, and that is why. PHP stand Drupal has a dependency on, oh, it's using, it's using net finder, not um, symphony finder, which is what is not what Webflow is using. Um, I know we had it globbed together to make it more dynamic um I just don't want to necessarily copy this and add net finder to this so we know that the includes aren't working here and for good measure I'm just going to prove that um this doesn't work because none of the none of those will work um demo umami install well that's a whole different scenario there let's verify that so we'll do drupal core includes this is where we need to start documenting drupal core includes module extension file that's a dot module do profile extension file dot profile uh themes we'll just go for bartik because that's there do theme extension file dot theme this and let's do theme engine while we're here theme engine extension file engine yield function exists 
All right, so if we run this, we should get a handful of failures because none of the file names or none of the function names can be found. So we will start, um, we will try a few things. So in PHP stand Drupal, we add module namespaces. Let me do here. We do more than register the namespaces. No, we don't. Um, oh, we load the extension. That's it. Um, so we go through each extension and we call this extension load and inside the load it actually requires the file so that's one thing that we'll have to do um, instead of adding it to the auto loader um, i want to see if we can try that out first actually so we got register extension namespaces. When we do scan, does this cat? I don't think this caches anything because I removed the static cache, static files. Oh, great. So it does have a static cache. Um, so let's do this load extensions. Say module. Add method. Um, so we'll do for e. Well, we'll just say copy this again. Type. So for each extensions as. I feel like in here we should just call this register extension instead of just namespaces. Um, so let's do register extensions because we're in here. So now we're going to do extension load, but, um, we actually wrapped it in here for a reason. Um, I do actually want to copy this out. Because we were having issues where a module would call um, static functions in its like root file and would actually throw errors and cause it from failing to load. Um, so let's copy that in there. And we will wrap it in this load extension extension. Oh, that's right. It's returning the wrong. Um, there. So let's try running the tests. That still didn't quite work. Let's run the debugger on. So extension action.yaml. So why why is it saying that the module the function doesn't exist? if we required the file, because that's exactly what we've had to do here. Hmm. Um, load and catch errors is for specific files. Let's register some namespaces. As namespaces. That's a good point. Thank you. I should set a breakpoint in the file to verify it's actually being included. Um, because for all I know is 
also that. Only the first call returns the proper expected results. Subsequent calls will return true. That's cool with me. Thank you for the tip because I would have gone in circles on myself. Um, so you can't breakpoint on random parts of, well, I guess you could. Like I could put a breakpoint here, but my habit as you've seen is I do this stop equals null and put a breakpoint. Um, ah. All right, I am in the wrong code base. So I'm gonna minimize PHP stand Drupal and we're gonna do test equals that. So you can see what's going on there and inside action.module, we'll stop, let's do a debug. So extension, action, step down so it's being auto loaded test is one um let's look yeah it so this root this path and file name so it actually loaded the file But why does it say the, oh man. So, you know, it makes sense if I actually called the function that was passed in. Uh, yeah, there we go. All right, let's run the entire thing. See, I make horde mistakes all the time. Like I've spent, I, I yeah. Just it's it happens. So now we show that we're not loading the um, theme engines. So let's do that next. Um, and undo my changes here. All right. Yeah. So that was that felt great. Way to that flew right over my head. Um, and we can remove this to do because that's what we're going to be doing right now. So regex, register extensions. At this point, this like validation thing feels kind of silly, but oh well, I'm keeping it. We got theme engine technically i don't think theme engines can have their own namespaces i don't even know when they get discovered to be honest extension discovery well that's a test bootstrap trigger error Extension discovery, service provider, registry, theme initialization. So I don't think they can have their own auto loader. Yeah, I mean, I, I really doubt theme engines are supported. Um, so even if we do auto load, like we create an auto loader for them, like of the namespace, it's not as much of a thing, but this is definitely a gap in PHP stand Drupal where we're not, I bet we're not um, analyzing the engine file here. So uh, why can I never see that? So PHP stand probably is not auto loading these classes and, in, and inspecting any of this, I bet. So, um, you know, if you're doing static code analysis, it might not catch that this function exists. Um, yeah, so that that's the main thing is making sure we inspect that file. So if I do run, woohoo, we got all green, all green all day. Um, man, this is going so much faster than it did like a year or two years ago when I first wrote PHP stand Drupal. Um, but I guess that's because I have lessons learned. 
So let's get back. So we have this here. Now we've got to move to the next part um, where in our test. So right, so let's test some more of the core includes like theme.inc. And we'll do theme get registry. And we're gonna explode. Yep. So we need to find all of these files and ins include them. I'm really curious why theme.inc isn't always included. I mean, even in headless, like you right now, I guess maybe because like in headless, I don't know, no idea. Um, but it's in Drupal kernel where it has its own load legacy includes. So this is one where we actually, I wonder if it would be good just to call this directly. Um, so this could be one reason that it'd be good to boot up a basic kernel to be able to load the legacy includes. Um, but at the same time, I think it's just worth copying. Oh, but things change between Drupal 8 and Drupal 9 where some of these files did get removed. And right now we're only testing against Drupal 9. Um, this will need to support Drupal 8. So that way, you know, we can have people get off of Drupal 8 much more easily. So why don't we try, we'll actually try the um, kernel. I don't want to do that though. Actually, no, we, we can't directly invoke the kernel because we don't have it as a dependency, as a dev dependency. So let's do a, um, this load, what do they call it? Load legacy includes, we'll copy the same name. So, right, isn't there, yeah, the glob. So why don't we look at how this works? Search, search for each search directories, this scan directory, recursive iter directory iterator. All right, we're going to go with that. Same with 10, yeah. A lot, I know a lot of these are supposed to die off and move to services, so that's why I don't want to hard code it, but I don't want to take, I don't want to add, I, I want to try to be as dependency independent as possible. Um, so let's take, I'm just going to copy this. And the absolute directory would be this, Drupal root includes well but that's directories and for each iterator as file info i'll be honest this is where i haven't done this as much so iterator is recursive iterator iterator <laughs> And the filter, we don't want to filter this. So let's, we'll copy that. And The best way to do it is to just pop on xdebug. Build open directory. Oh, yep, because I thought Drupal root So 
the composer route. I thought the Drupal route was supposed... Oh, yeah, that's like the doc route, not with core. I forgot. So in here, I need to do core includes. Now, if I do the debugger, the iterator, file info, theme maintenance. Okay, great. So we can then just do um, key. I guess we can just include the key then, but it feels dangerous just blindly accepting that. Um, Drupal kernel. That's not what I wanted. I want to get back to the scan. The scan directory. And how do they filter? So I'm not worried about that. So this validates the, this finds the info.yaml. That's how it registers it. I guess what we can do is say, um, let's see, file name. So let's do an assert. File info, get extension. Reload. Okay, so if if file info get extension is equal to ink. We'll just do a require once of file info get path name do test stop that break that breakpoint well text but it's the same difference all right let's stop that um do require once and let's see if file info get oh weird so it was actually auto completing better due to the fact that it was inside of I was X debugging that's new I didn't know that um, Well, it's a cert so file info. We want to do file info get file name or not test. So if File name. We already know that um, bootstrap, not booty, um, bootstrap.ink is added to the composer dump. So we want to just skip that. Even though we're doing require once, it should be all okay. But I just want to skip it since it should already be loaded. And there we go. Hmm. All right. So that is working. We can now verify that these are all loaded. Let's run it. All right. So we've got includes.yaml or not yaml. We've got the includes profiles, themes. Um, let's go back to this. 
and try to trace through my hot legacy mess here. Um, <laughs> so we got the module data, the test name spaces, I guess would be next is we need to verify that we can load tests. Well, this is always so hard. Um, that I want to skip it, but let's do data provider, um, class test names. We can't say test class names because that means that it would try to execute it as a test because it begins with the word test. Um, let's add this data provider. And we'll do class exists. Um, Um, test the, what do we call these? The test suite, uh, test core. I don't know. Can't think of a good comment. So in, these also aren't registered and they live in a special area. So under tests, we have this bootstrap.php, which finds all the things and registers all the namespaces. Um, one especially pain part point is traits because they live in a special traits directory. Um, this is what we need to replicate right here is this populate class loader. Oh, that's a smart idea. It provides X. Let's do that because that's a little bit more explicit then. So if I do, oh, cool, I can rename it here. Provides class names. provides test class names provides functions how about provides test classes provides classes there we go i like that a lot better thank you that feels a lot smoother um and again i just use the built-in refactoring to rename from the annotation um so class exists and let's see where we want to start off build test so let's go here so drupal build test is this directory which actually oh so let's look at so it's drupal build test composer so it's saying that um, composer validate test, let's copy the reference. We know this is going to fail. But let's just run it. Okay, we've got our failure. I can make this, I had this expanded earlier because I had a really long test name. Um, so it's false is true or that, yeah, it failed. So let's look at here. So it gets the auto loader and it adds this to the test directory, um, which is here. So let's go to our auto loader and we'll say this register test um start with classes and known locations we'll just say we'll just start calling it test register or this register test namespaces and again i'm going to do option enter which is the same as clicking this light bulb i'm going to do add method so let's do we're going to just copy this and copy that function name. I'm going to say C there. So that way when you hold on command and hover, it can bring us back there real easily. So we're going to say this loader, auto loader, add 
and we're gonna replace, actually let's copy this. I'm gonna hold down option and when you hold down, when you hold down option, when you double click something, hold on option and double click more. They'll let you highlight it all. Um, say, so it would be this Drupal root slash core slash tests is the replacement. So again, I'm gonna double click on that and then hold on option so I can mass highlight all of these and paste it. So let's rerun my failed test. Oh, this is where I hate things. Um, set up before class must be compatible with. So Drupal's got some fun things going on here. And um, I'll show you some of those. So build taste be test base. We've got these wonderful errors where the base class wants a void, but this doesn't have a void yet. So Drupal works around this. I didn't think I'd be hitting this this fast. Um, Drupal has this wonderful, and it is pretty wonderful. It is crafty. Like, I can't believe it. Um, thing called class writer, a helper class to rewrite test classes. And it's this class mutator, which whenever you run tests, tests, it finds functions which define a void return type, alters it, and stashes it in the simple test site directory. So on demand, it rewrites the code and loads this before the autoloader has a chance to run to prevent this from being broken. And if you caught my live stream for PHP stand Drupal a while ago, like, um, like in February, maybe in March, um, time is flying by. I worked around this and this is how I had to work around it. So I like was about to cry because I didn't know what to do. And this is my hack in PHP stand Drupal. I have a auto load for this file called Drupal PHP unit hack. And in it, we check the auto loader and we find the test case and we perform the same alter and we stash it in our text test fixtures. So we do the same mutation and we store it in our fixtures and that's what's in here. So I have to port this over to the auto loader already, which is just fun, fun, fun. Um, so let's do that because we're, we're there already. Um, I don't think we can load this. Yeah, we can't just load that. So yeah, it's, it's brilliant, but when you're trying to be a tool that provides static analysis for Drupal and you're handling Drupal 8, 9, and then PHP at 6, 7, 8, 9, it's just mind boggling. Like it's just, yeah, it's, it's hard. Um, so we're going to copy this file verbatim because I know it's new. I know it's as minimal as it can be. And we're going to copy this auto load. So what this means and how this works here is we are, actually, I don't even think I fully explained how it works inside of Drupal. Um, so if we go back to tests, we go back to bootstrap, somewhere in here oh here it is so inside the bootstrap.php before everything's auto loaded it mutates the test base so we don't have a way to easily call this before things are auto loaded 
So that's why we have to define it in our auto loader. So if we do composer dump auto load, um, and if I rerun the test, we'll see here that we have the test case. And it still failed. Drupal requires prophecy PHP unit when using PHP 9 or greater. Yep, okay, so that's good. So we're going to update this get ignore test case, ignore mutated test class. So like the mind boggling thing is that we're overriding PHP unit and the auto loader um, whenever this is hit by doing a re by doing a include um i'm going to change this to include once by doing this include we're preloading it so it won't hit the auto loader and hit load the class from php unit um so yeah it's it's crazy and it like just makes me think like wow if somebody added this to their package without knowing about it you could change somebody's php unit test to like you know secretly do anything like when they run their tests um yeah so like i don't know if there's packages that verify this that you're not accidentally using some mutated code in your php unit tests um because now anybody that's depending on this is getting this test class um it's it's pretty wild and i'm not sure how i feel about it but there's nothing else I can do. Um, so yeah, I forgot when using PHP 9 or greater, you have to require, um, you have to run this, which breaks. Oh, man. Which, if we add that, that makes it near impossible to test. Um, Drupal 8 locally. So, and I don't want to put a conflicts in it because we want to support all the versions. So I'm going to just add that for now. So that way we can get the test going. And we have all green tests. So that's amazing. Um, that's exactly what I have in PHP Send Drupal. So we have it all in here. Um, I actually created a GitHub action called set up Drupal, which um, so inside set up Drupal, it runs that code. So in source, so it runs composer create project for you. Oh shoot, that doesn't help inside my PHP unit test. Never mind. Well, I'll quick explain that. So if you need a test like integration code, it runs that command require for you um, if it, the version is greater than eight. But what do I do? So this is the integration test. What do I do for PHP unit here? Oh, I straight up check if the matrix is 8.9 or not. Um, and I dynamically require it. So I'm going to copy this workflow. Um, new directory dot github slash workflows file php yaml. And I should copy my php stand dot neon in and PHP CS. Yeah. 
it's just I don't think I ever figured out how to make it work locally is the problem. Um, because in here I downgrade our dev dependencies. So it runs a composer install and then it downgrades dependencies to PHP unit six, drush nine and core recommended core dev with all dependencies. Well, that doesn't make, oh, if 8.9, that's it. I see. So if we're in 8.9, we force a downgrade. And if we're in nine, we force the, we add the requirement to PHP unit. Um, so I'm going to remove this. I wish there was like optional require dev, like a peer dependency. Um, which I just realized it's four o'clock here now. It's been going on two hours. I'm going to push this up. Um, I think this was a, like, I got farther than I would have thought and the codes so far a lot cleaner than I would have expected. Um, so I want to just quickly add a to do needs more test from test of files from core tests. Um, I know this is probably going to blow up, but I may as well. Uh, CDF source. Right, so yeah, that made it PSR2, sure. Extension discovery, 321. Find 321. Expected one space. Why does it have the comments off? I don't. 471. Sure. Three twenty one. Oh, because the comment. Four sixty nine. All right, so that will pass. Let's just see what PHP stands says. Yeah, let's not make that level eight. Let's just not run that at all I think for right now because it's also running against the Drupal core code um, we'll do that and I guess I guess that's it let me just ignore You want to mark that as excluded. All right. Let's group it by directory. 
And let's just call it the initial commit forwarding. Uh, it's just an initial initial commit forwarding of static autoloader from PHP Stan and Drupal. All right. So let's do the commit and push. And the action should be running. Did I do it wrong? GitHub workflows. Not GitHub. Oh, work lows. Ah. All right. Um, I refuse to make a commit to just fix that. So I'm just going to do a force push, which means that won't exist anymore. So workflows, and it didn't run yet. So, all right, thanks for tuning in. Um, and thank you for the uh, assistance and the rubber ducking. Um, yeah, so this will be nice. And hopefully this is something that the, like I said, the Psalm plugin can take advantage of. PHP and Drupal definitely will take care of it or tackle it. Um, and my plan is for Drupal Rector too, because after like while working on Drupal Rector, just pointing it to like PHP standard, just auto load globs of files just doesn't seem to work um, for some reason. So this was pretty productive for two hours and I think it covers quite a bit. There's a lot more to cover such as um, in here, loading all the legacy includes in a module. Um, we cover it somewhere. Like for views that inks so like magic hook info includes post update that install, um, ignoring some of the install files. Apparently we're not loading something in the locale module. So in locale language, sorry, it's language, but it's locale in the interface. Um, there's some file. No. Oh, it is locale. Yeah. It's like in locale, like batch.inc isn't low, isn't technically a file that's supposed to be included. Same with translation.inc. So it's all kind of like random includes that aren't always loaded. So thanks for tuning in and I'll probably be working on this. I'll, I'll post the next time I'll be working on it.